Join the show tonight. This man's burst onto the scene at the D2 level, under center for the Chos, the Bron Chos, that is. Throws for almost 400 yards a game. The number is ridiculous. Fears nothing but heights and his children being as short as he is. The man himself from Central Oklahoma, Jed Huff. What's going on, man? <laughs> How's it going? Dude, I'm good. I'm better now that we have you on the show. I love that little bit. It was from your bio uh, over at Houston. That cracked me up as uh, a fellow vertically challenged uh, football playing individual. I feel you there. That was uh, that was a good little tidbit, dude. Um, but talking talking about that, um, you know, you come over from Houston and now just exploding onto the scene, like I said, the D2 level. This last couple of weeks for you, I mean months even, obviously getting into camp with these guys and doing everything, uh, this had to have been just a really fun ride so far. And it ain't over by, by any stretch of the word, but so far I just imagine this has been a fun stretch for you and your football playing career, man. Yeah, no, it's been a blast. It's all happened really fast, too. Um uh, but you know, I couldn't ask for a better group of guys to be doing it with. Oh yeah. Um, and, and it's been real fun so far. Love to hear that. And, uh, when you have guys that having fun off the field, you guys are obviously having fun on it. Uh, that kind of speaks for itself, but talking about Houston and moving forward, when did you know it was time to make the move away from the Cougars and what stood out about UCO that, uh, ended up making that the landing spot for you? Yeah, I knew probably, um, after spring ball, my uh, freshman year, um, just kind of figured, you know, wasn't going to quite get the, the opportunities, you know, I mm -hmm. wanted. Yep. Um, but I did know uh, fall of my sophomore year that I was going to travel. And instead of leaving after just one year at Houston, um, I wanted to experience, uh, you know, life on the road, the Big 12, I guess, oh, yeah. one way to put it, um, going to see, you know, big stadiums and what it's like to be at big games um, on the sidelines. Uh, so I figured, you know, and just spend some more time with my guys too. Uh, you know, I got some great friends there. Um, but that freshman spring um, definitely kind of started to think about it. And then as the season went on um, last year, uh, just kind of thinking about future landing spots. Hundred percent, and now uh, under center. Now that has obviously come to fruition, and we talk on this show a lot about the most competitive conference in Division Two football. And you throw around names like the GLIAC and the Gulf South and the NSIC, and all these are very deserving conferences to talk about. I don't think you can make a better argument for any conference right now than the MIAA, and it feels like this is a conference that any team from top to bottom can pull off the unthinkable, the unimaginable on any given week. We had, shit, two top five upsets in the same week, you guys being uh, a big part of that. Talk about what you've seen so far in this conference and uh, if it kind of lives up to the, to the hype and title that I'm giving it. Yeah, well, you said it, you know, top to bottom. Um it's it's just going to be competitive every single week, no matter the matchup, uh, time of year. Um, I mean, you know, watching film every week. Um, I mean, even if a team, you know, doesn't quite have a great record, you know, they have just dudes, um, you know, both sides of the ball, every position. I mean, the players in this conference, um, I mean, you're facing just the best competition in the, in the country, you know, every week. Um, so you got to, you got to prepare, um, you know, as much as you can every single week. Uh, we just know um, every game is going to be a dogfight. Yeah, fair enough. And speaking of pulling off the unimaginable and many other adjectives to go along with that one, I would say going and beating the number two team in the country with the reigning Harlan Hill winner under center is probably up there with all the other crazy shit that's happened this football season. For you guys, it's obviously been a highlight. Talk to me about that game against the Mules, throwing the football probably over every square inch of that field down there in Edmond. Uh, what was that experience like? That was just a back-and-forth offensive shootout uh, with some great defensive plays and timely defensive plays obviously mixed in there, but uh, pretty Big 12-esque, I, I dare to say. Yeah, no, uh, you definitely look at the look at the box score and think so. Um, but, you know, all week we were just saying, you know, shoot our shot. Um, you know, we don't, we don't, we didn't have anything to lose. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, we knew they were going to be an unbelievable football team. I mean, what they did last year, that was n no fluke at all. I mean, losing to the national champions by one point, um, 
I mean, that just doesn't happen by accident. And um, knowing, you know, they got to come here and play us, that gives us a little bit of an advantage. Um, and we knew, you know, they're going to score a lot of points. You know, they do every game. Um, but if we could just, you know, stay consistent on offense, stay in the game, um, we thought we were going to, we thought we were going to be able to be successful. And, you know, to the bare eye might not, might not look like our, you know, our defense, you know, but I mean, they yeah, look play. at the box score. I totally get it. But like I said, sure. timely plays, they step up when they need to, right? Sure. And I that's mean, that's important. You look at their, their last, I don't know, 10, 12 games. I mean, our defense played as good as anybody has against them. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, maybe looking at a box score, you know, it, it just doesn't tell the whole story. Our, our defense really kept us in that game. And uh, especially late in the fourth quarter, you know, I think they only scored three in the fourth quarter to our 21. Um, so being able for them to finish the game late um, was was just huge. No, I, I agree with you 100%. And like you said, the, the box score it never tells the whole story. You're not going to get that without uh, – some would say watching the whole game, and some would even go one step further and saying being there, like uh, feet actually in the venue for said contest. And uh, I think that's that's important. Like everything's relative, and to put it into perspective, you are right in that there are not a lot of defenses that even have that level of success against the Central Missouri offense. You throw for almost 460 in that contest. Zach on the other side, about 440. I mean – just back and forth every time you're off the field. This had to have been like much must see TV from the sideline, even when you weren't on the field. Talk about what the game dynamic was like when there were so many of those big chunk plays. A lot of these touchdowns are not like, you know, at the one yard line, finally capping off a 16 play drive. You're not playing Harding, right? We're playing the Central Missouri offense that is big time explosive plays. You guys have a lot of that same caliber type of offense. What was that dynamic like of the back and forth big chunk plays? Yeah, yeah, uh, you know. Uh, when you start breaking off some long plays, you're getting chunks at a time. Um, you know they're they're going to answer right back, and you know their style of offense. You know, watching it, they're not going on 10, 15 play drives that eat up clock. I mean, they're going to hit uh, long shots too. So knowing, you know, you got to be excited after you know you just hit a big play, but you got to come to the sideline and, and kind of regroup, knowing you're probably going to be back out on the field in yeah. you know two minutes. Um, I think it's just keeping that, you know, even keel type of type of mentality, knowing, you know, one big play isn't going to do it. You're going to have to keep going back there and keep uh, keep duking it out. Yep. hundred percent. You certainly did that. Uh, your dad was an All-American kicker at UCM. Yes, he was. That's pretty special stuff, too, there. That that really is, dude. He he was a he was a. He was a show that night, though. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. I like that. Um, now, let's talk about this offense uh, at Fort Hayes now. We get we get up to our speed now. Right? We're finally catching ourselves up. A little bit of background because, admittedly, I wasn't hip to your game. I wasn't hip to this Broncho game. And now I very much am uh, because of the likes of you guys and some of the other talented pieces offensively, defensively, and on that coaching staff down there. I, I, we got to talk about that UCM game because I think for – me and for other people out here, that's what really has separated you guys, and it, it's obvious why. Uh, but just know, like, I'm, I'm hip now, so I know what to expect, and I'm expecting a lot from you guys on the road. I'm excited to continue to follow. But talk about this Fort Hayes game. Right now, you guys are top five in D2 in more categories than one. You're leading right now, like, nation in total offense. And um, I'm not here just to blow your head up, but I, it, it's impressive numbers. Seriously, they're ridiculous. You're throwing some talented guys on the outside, Davis being one of them who has been a freak for you guys offensively, but there's more than just him. He obviously pops out of the stat line. Uh, you've got a line up front that, that's doing their best to make sure you stay clean. Talk about the energy on the, the offensive side of the ball down there in Edmond. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it really started, I think, um, we just weren't running enough plays last year. That was kind of, you know, um, what was being said. Um, and so uh, off season, I think we went through a little bit of an off uh, offense change. Um, that really sparked our tempo and our big playability. Um, but it's it's awesome when you go out on the field and all eleven guys are on the exact same page. Yeah. Um, knowing their their job, that play, um, and everybody's doing you know their absolute best to execute their job every play. And when you have eleven guys that are all on the same page, um, good things happen. And um, it's a big testament to our coaching staff. Um, giving us good looks during the week, um, showing us, you know, what they think 
um, for Hayes the other night, you know, what they think Fort Hayes is going to show us on base downs or third downs, third and longs, third and short, um, uh, you know, when they're going to blitz, when they're not. Um, and it really starts with the coaches staff, you know, giving us those looks, getting us ready to play, but then calling, I mean, almost a perfect game uh, the other night. Um, and I think it's just the coaches plus, you know, have 11 guys on the field all with a common goal in mind. Um, I think that's, you know, that's how we're able to go out there and be successful. I love it. Dealing the ball out to your talented wide receiver and offensive skill, and then you come on the broadcast and you're dealing out the assists and the shout-outs. I'm here for it. Um, that, that's what the quarterback's supposed to say, right? That's You're doing a good job of it. That's exactly where you're, where you're supposed to be at, man. Um, you guys scored uh, three times in the first quarter of this one. You go up 21 nothing. It's pretty obvious, but talk about to your uh, ability and speak on that for this team to get up and ahead on opponents and, and kind of what that forces them to do on the other side of the ball there. Yeah, well, I mean, last week at Nebraska Kearney, we got off to a really slow start. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't quite, you know, get going like like we do, like we wanted to. Um, I think that was a big goal this week against Fort Hayes was to just definitely start better than that. Um, but when you're able to go up on a team, especially early in the game, uh, first half, but um, first quarter even, it makes them have to play catch up. Um, and our offense is built so well to where – you know, we can go out and hit big plays early in the game. And, but when they, you know, start to, you know, maybe drop a drop another player or, you know, they're going to play seven deep and they're going to give us good run boxes, well, that allows us now to be able to run the ball at a really, really high level, run some clock, um, and keep the ball out of the opponent's hands. I mean, it also help, helps our defense a lot, you know, because you get up so – you get up big quick on a team. Well, now they're pressing to get points back. Um and our defense, you know, obviously they're going to have to pass the ball. Um, and that allows our defense to rush the passer well, but also play coverage without having to worry a ton about yep. them uh, running the ball. Um, I think get off to fast start is, is just so important uh, against a talented team like Fort Hayes. Can we get a touchdown celebration where you guys get up into the waterfall? You know, every day at practice – we look at that waterfall and say, like, it would be so nice to get in right now, um, <laughs> especially the O-linemen. You know how they get. Uh. <laughs> you look around D2, and, and I'm up here at Northern Michigan, right? I mean, right on Lake Superior, which is, like, the best of the best when it comes to, you know, freshwater lakes. And fall camp, you're jumping in. Uh, you look over at Bemidji in the Northern Sun. They win the game. They walk right off the field into the water. I'm not saying we got to reinvent the wheel. Just add a little bit of that Broncho twist to it. Get some of the guys going through the waterfall. I'm here for it. Yeah, I mean. I don't know if their facilities and the grounds people there are are necessarily as on board as I am. Uh, That would be a separate conversation, but it'd be sick. I think think the water would just be too cold to even enjoy it. Oh, Um, come on. But uh, someday, I, <laughs> someday I want to get in for sure. Man, after I, after some of these games, I doubt you'd even feel it going in there, running on the adrenaline you probably got going on. But um, no, that's that would be hilarious. And that that stadium has gone through some some pretty big renovations as of late. Uh, the energy there it seems to have been obviously I haven't been there, but judging from the outside, watching it seems to have, have a really good atmosphere. But we talked about it earlier. No bye weeks uh, in this conference, this league at Missouri Southern this weekend. What do you know about the Lions? What do you need to do to get the result that you need on the road? Yeah, well, we we just need to play our type of football, I think, you know. Um, I think the way our offense is designed, it's we can score points uh, against any type of defense, um, whether that's running, uh, passing it deep, uh, maybe throwing intermediate, uh, maybe throwing short screens and stuff. Um, I think we just need to hone in on what we're doing um, and just keep getting better at our crafts, and I, I think that's just going to lead the way. Fair enough. Still go by jet ski at all? I do, I do. That's uh, it's been a nickname for a while. That might I need that to nickname. make like a like a real not like a comeback, maybe because it didn't didn't ever leave. But like we might need to like fully lean into that over there, you know? If you get people on board with it, I'm I'm all for it. Okay, I'm I'm a hold I'm gonna hold you to that. When you see a graphic come out D1R after your next game, and it's you photoshopped onto a literal jet ski, maybe going down said waterfall. Ben. I that's something I need to see. That is something <laughs> I need to see. See you, you joke. I'm here. All right, genitive, gen, the generative fill on the, on the Photoshop is crazy. 
I can do some no. wild, wild. Th- okay, Let's, not joking. I'm, I'd love to see that. I'm booking it. I'm booking it, dude. But but really, I I, I do appreciate you uh, joining me tonight, man. It's been uh, genuinely fun to watch you guys. I'm always a fan of like seeing new teams be like incredibly successful. As silly and simple as that sounds, uh, I love to just get hip to different teams and, and guys who are just balling out. You guys have been at the top of my list when it comes to D2 and just uh, forcing me to learn about this squad and what you guys have going on down there has been uh, has been a treat. So I'm excited to continue to follow you guys the rest of the season, man. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate you. Hell yeah. Have a good rest of your night, man. I'll see you. All right. Thank you. Of course.